the mountain, or the jungle. And the little governor inside our brain. Hello everyone, it's January 7th, 2020. Welcome to a new decade, and welcome to Harp Tuesday. In this episode, I'm going to talk about two concepts and how they relate to learning new things. So let's talk about the central governor in our brain. This is a concept I first encountered a number of years ago listening to a Radio Labs podcast about limits. They're talking about physical limits, and as a book I'm currently reading says, the, the, the sort of the curiously elastic properties of these limits. So, for example, a marathon runner who maybe finishes the marathon and you think they've used the last ounce of energy and they win, and then they're, they're celebrating afterwards and running around and where'd that energy come from? Or, for example, one of the stories on that podcast was about uh, a cyclist doing this race from coast to coast across the United States, biking on no sleep or very little sleep, and it, oh, exhausted and just no energy, just suffering along, and then suddenly hallucinating, and the wolves, the wolves are after him, and so, boom, he takes off, and he has this extra energy. Or, again, in the, from the podcast, this idea of people as sort of establishing a baseline on stationary bicycles, and then they found that by just administering a drop of, I think, not even actual energy drink, not actually just something that tasted like energy drink, but without any sugar, without any actual energy contained within it, they had a noticeable increase in their ability, in their speed or their longevity. And so that leads into this concept of this central governor that regulates our energy, because of course it makes sense, right? From an evolutionary standpoint, we need to keep energy in reserve just in case the wolves do jump out at us, or if we see some prey that we have an opportunity to hunt. We don't want to expend too much energy. And so with this, with this little extra drop of, of, of fake energy juice, the idea is that the, this little central governor in our brain says, oh, we're going to be getting some more energy soon. I guess it's okay to release a little bit of energy. And it wasn't a huge amount, but just a little bit more energy. And so the premise is, and I, I just love this picture, right, of, of maybe some dour bureaucratic central governor right in front of this tiny little door, and behind that door is this huge, vast store of energy. And we submit a proposal. Here's what we'd like to do. Oh, hmm. Energy, 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 hmm. too much, denied, right? And so this idea that maybe oftentimes we do have a lot of energy in reserve. And in our modern world, for the most part, we don't have to worry about running from the wolves or hunting prey. And so it's okay sometimes to access that store of energy. And of course, it's, it's good to have some energy in reserve, right? That this is a safety mechanism. People do die on that race across America it is possible to push your limits to the point where, where you do die. And we do want to keep something in reserve. But again, I like this concept of the central governor and this idea that oftentimes it's maybe our brain, our central governor that wants to keep more energy in reserve than, than it really needs to. And so just a personal story for me, I, I do quite a bit of bicycling. And from my house to downtown and back again, it's about 20 kilometers. And so I've done this ride many, many times. And, and now, even if I haven't been bicycling for a while and I feel that I'm really quite out of shape and, 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 and there might be some resistance to getting on the bike, but once I'm on my bike, I don't have my mind fighting against me. I'm able to do the ride there and back more easily than I think I should based on my physical condition. And I think that's because I'm not having to fight this central governor, this, this little voice in your head that says, well, Maybe you should turn back. Maybe you should stop. Oh, aren't you exhausted? This is, this, is, this is hard. Because I know from experience, or my central governor knows from experience, that it's going to be safe. I'm going to be able to get there and back, even if I'm out of shape, and still have energy to, to run from the wolves. And similar, again, just a personal story of, of jogging, which I don't do a lot of. And I have a little route that I will occasionally run. And if I try to go further than that, I experience quite a lot of resistance in, in the brain of, no, oh, you're tired, you're sore, that's it, that's great, that's time to stop. And again, 
there are physical limits, right? I'm, uh, but sometimes maybe they're not quite where we think they are. And so that leads me then to mental limits and mental energy. And so I would suggest that perhaps we have this same little central governor in terms of regulating our expenditure of energy when we're trying to learn something new, right? Because when we're trying to learn something new, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment, we're expending tremendous energy. And this central governor, again, might look at that and say, denied, that's, that's, that's too much, right? And, and we experience that, I, I mean, at least I experience that, right? Of maybe learning a new piece or a new skill, something that's new to you and how it's it can be exhausting. And again, it's easy to come up with excuses or to come up with reasons to, mm, maybe I'll put that off for the moment or maybe I'll play this piece I know really well instead. And so, and yet, I guess, this is a case where we can safely expend a lot more mental energy, I think, right? That we're not, obviously, again, if you think back thousands of years, you would want to be able to be alert in case you had to fight or flee that we need that reserve. But here, in the safety of our own homes, it's probably okay to spend quite a bit of mental energy learning a new piece of music or learning a new skill. The jungle or the mountain. So when we learn new concepts, when we learn anything, right, what we're doing is we are creating connections between synapses so that neurons can travel between those and fire those synapses and create learning and create patterns and create habits and create the results that we want. And so when we are doing something that we know very well, those neurons travel those paths between synapses. It's, it's as if it's a super highway, right? It's just so smooth and easy. And sometimes it's a good thing. Sometimes it's a bad thing, right? That something triggers a response and boom, 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 boom. Our neurons follow that pathway and habits and maybe they're good habits, maybe they're bad habits. But when we're trying to learn something that's new and in particular, the less that it's connected to anything else that we know, we have to build these connections between synapses. And that can be exhausting. And so one of the similes that often gets used is trying to pathfinder your way through the jungle. So with no path, trying to hack your way through the jungle and forge through the jungle, you'd have to fight for every inch. It requires so much energy, in this case, so much mental energy to do that. But eventually, if you can make that, make it there, you know, trying to get point, point A to point B, if you can build that connection, then each subsequent time you travel that path, you, you think that thought, you do that movement, you create that connection, each subsequent time it becomes easier and easier until hopefully eventually that also becomes a super highway. And so the problem lies in our ability to predict the future and sense of effort. So what happens, I believe, is that when we're first creating that new connection, when there's no connection, we're creating that new connection that requires so much effort. And it, um, we feel as if we're climbing up a very steep mountain and we might think, okay, we're here and we're trying to get over here, right? From A to B, or actually, sorry, I guess I should reverse this. We're here. And we're trying to get over here. And we are seeing this steep effort required. So it feels as if to get all the way over to point B, it's going to require a tremendous amount of energy. And of course, then the little governor in our brain kicks in and says, well, forget that. Let's, let's, no, that, no, 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 that's not a good idea. But of course, what happens is it's not a mountain. It's, it's, it's the jungle, or perhaps we could say it's a bump that once we start to build those connections, that, that's, that's hard work, right? That's really hard work. I'm not saying that's not hard work, but once we build those and now we're starting to refine them and to, to learn these new skills, we reach the top, we, you know, we, we get to a point where suddenly it, the effort flattens out and then it actually maybe starts to get easier as those connections start to become, those pathways through the jungle start to become more and more trodden and start to become paths and roads and superhighways. And so 
we actually pick up speed on the way down. So getting from here to here is not this super steep Everest. It's this little bump and then a downward. So if we can get past that bump, we're in great shape. And I remember writing a blog post many years ago about experiencing that same thing. And I've experienced this at various times. Again, this is particularly when you're learning sort of new unrelated skills because you have nothing, no prior connections or very few connections already forged. And in this case, I was trying to learn some web programming and just that overwhelming sense of, ah, uh, this is just too much. This is just too much, that effort. And, and, and again, partly then the brain ready to say, oh, this is too much, I can't do this, forget it. And I experienced that actually just a little while ago as well when I switched video editing software. And part of me was there saying, hey, no, what I'm what I, I'm already familiar with this other program and, and oh, it's gonna be, it's too much effort, too much effort. And that yet looking back, it looks easy, right? And you think, well, 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 how was the problem? So again, our ability to predict is wrong, right? That, that we, we predict this and actually it's this bump. It's not a mountain, it's a bump. And that is just something to hang on to when you're tackling something that feels so overwhelming that if you can start to forge those connections, if you can start to somehow make sense of it, it's going to get much easier. So how to apply these concepts to learning music? And of course, what I'm talking about applies primarily to learning new things. So in other words, when we have very few or no synaptic connections, and we're trying to forge those connections, that's when our mental effort is at its peak. And it's good just to be aware of the fact that chances are we probably do have enough energy in reserve to be able to continue to tackle this. And that our perception of the effort required is wrong. That it's not this super steep line of effort, that it actually, at a point earlier than we think, it's gonna become much easier. So those are both good things to be aware of. If we specifically look at music, this might be learning a new piece. If, if you're not, if you don't tend to learn too many new pieces, that might be difficult, just any new piece. Might be learning a new piece of say modern music that has the patterns that are much less familiar than say a piece by Mozart. It might be learning to read music in general. Maybe you don't know how to read music and you're learning to read music. That's a totally new skill, right? It's gonna require a lot of mental energy. Or maybe many people come to the harp knowing how to read treble clef, or in some cases bass clef, and then trying to learn to read bass clef or treble clef. And that again will require mental energy. And I'm not saying that it won't, but just being aware that there will be this resistance from the central governor in our brain. It's, oh, this is gonna require a lot of energy. And so being aware of that, and I like the idea of leaning into it, leaning into the effort, sort of just, just gently pushing. So it's not that we're trying to overcome this immediately, but we're trying to acknowledge that that resistance is there and just lean into it and try and quiet that central governor in our brain and say, yes, I hear you, but I'm safely gonna be able to expend this energy, even though it is quite a bit of energy, it's all right. And so you might encounter this resistance, right? This effect when learning a piece of music, what can happen, for example, is we, we maybe learn the first several pages of a piece, and then next day we start again at the beginning, and start again at the beginning, and maybe never get to page four. And then what happens is the first three pages become very enjoyable to play and don't require a lot of mental effort. And we get to page four and we think, well, hmm, I could try and learn this, or I could go back and play the first three pages again. And what's the central governor in the brain gonna suggest? Let's go back and play those first three pages again. So just leaning into that and say, okay, yes, I'm gonna tackle this last page. And so maybe I'll start. Instead of playing those first three pages, I'll just work on the fourth page alone. Or within a piece of music, there might be a particular section or sections or one little phrase, one little bar that is more difficult or more challenging or harder than the rest. And it's easy to kind of skate by that. Because again, we know we're gonna to have to expend a certain amount of effort, mental and perhaps physical as well, to try and get that better. But just 
noticing that and, and just kind of leaning into that. Because that's one of the best ways, right, to improve a piece of music is to pinpoint and notice those spots that are harder than the rest and work on them. And of course, it also makes sense to think about your practice schedule. And when there are things that you're trying to learn that are going to require that mental effort, learning to read music, try and schedule at a point in your practice schedule where you feel you will have some extra energy to kind of get you headed up that mountain that's really a bump and to overcome and to quiet that central governor in the brain and just to have that energy to tackle these things because they can be hard. But it's so fascinating, right, how our brain can be so helpful, but it can also be unhelpful. And so just being aware of that. And again, I love that idea of leaning into things. So I hope that was interesting. I hope that was useful. And I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Does this match what you've experienced? Have you come up with some great strategies to kind of quiet the central governor in the brain? Have you, for example, tried to learn something and it could be, doesn't have to be music, could be languages, could be math, could be anything. Have you tried to learn something and had that experience of it feeling like an insurmountable or almost insurmountable mountain of effort? And then, oh, it turns out it was more of a mound and a bump and that it actually wasn't at all as hard as you thought. So again, please comment below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in two weeks time. Cheers.